that's weird. I wonder who that could be. Pentagram for you, Mr. Cole. <laughs> Thanks. Hmm. Oh, what the fuck? For those of you that don't know of them, and I'm willing to bet that's most of you, myself and David included until recently, Satan's Hollow is something of a heavy metal revival band from Chicago, made up of members from other various new wave of British heavy metal tribute bands, so to speak. Yeah. They're, they're all unique material, but they're very authentic in their throwback sound to the 80s. Oh yeah, definitely. And I don't know what I'm going to say after this. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of uh, similarities to early Iron Maiden. In particular, the uh, first two CDs of theirs, those really rough and tumble, more punk-oriented uh, albums, the ones that had a more prominent bass tone, uh, a lot louder, more rough and tumble. Uh, they sound an awful lot like Riot and Warlock in particular. Doro Pesh, uh, their vocalist sounds almost identical to the one on here. Uh, Mandy's vocals sound almost identical, minus the German accent, the loud, over-the-top German accent. So uh, if, if you know those bands, understand those kinds of uh, 80s bands, you'll be right at home here with them. Uh, Satan's Hollow really channels all those bands and really gets the ball moving there. As you probably know, here at Heavy Meta, we like to start with the, the shit parts of an album. We like to get those out of the way before we get into all the positive qualities of an album. If there are any. Right. And in this case, there are a lot more pros and cons, honestly. Oh, definitely. But the biggest issue I, I will start with is the vocals are very oddly produced. They're quieter than everything else in the mix. I mean, the bass is noticeably louder than the vocals. Even. Yeah, definitely. And... I feel like her vocals are muffled and they have an echoey effect on them, which I feel like might be an attempt to get a throwback 80s sound to it, like yeah, the older yeah, heavy metal albums see that. all have. And for me, I just don't like it. Mandy is a fantastic vocalist, and I would like to hear her more at the forefront. Right. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I feel like she's utilized well here on the, uh, the actual compositional side, but the production really isn't lending itself well enough to really building her up and giving her a structure to sound off appropriately. Besides the production squabbles here, uh, there is one other major concern, and that has to do with two tracks on the album. Uh, really, the band has this huge mysticism thing going with their lyrics as well as their production work. Uh, the major atmosphere involved here. And the bigger issue is that while they have almost like a merciful fate kind of vibe going on here, uh, a lot of their tracks dealing with the unknown, uh, the mysterious, the magical, the the larger than life. Uh, there are these two tracks, uh, one being about love that's moving on, and the other being hot passion while being a, a worthy tribute to the past and, and a sure barn burner in the concerts. Uh, they just... They don't go anywhere that really lends themselves well to this band's persona. Uh, they just feel very awkward in comparison to the other tracks. They don't add anything in particular. So uh, I'd like to see them really focus more and hone those skills, those uh, lyrical themes, and maybe get rid of these kinds of tracks. I, I don't need any more of those throwback, nostalgic kind of tracks on my metal albums. Not today. Everybody's tired of those. So. I'm going to have to disagree with you to some extent. I see your point about how they, they don't fit thematically. But if I have an issue with any of the tracks, it's that the, the ones that are slightly longer around the five minute mark, I think the longest one is barely over five minutes, yeah. and then there's one slightly under five. The, my biggest issue is that those kind of plod. They're not able to do the mid pace songs that well. I feel like they're, they get a little boring. I can take the whole, the barn burners, even if they're thematically not fitting in, into the album. So, yeah. Barring that, uh, really only Hot Passion brings the track listing down to any degree. Uh, it just feels very simplistic compared to other parts of the album, especially in comparison to the final track on the album. Beyond the Bells. Right, uh, which has some of my favorite lyrics on the entire uh, CD, a lot of really good metaphors, some dense wordplay. Um, 
just excellent lyricism. So it, it really looks odd in comparison to, you know, even anything else there. From a lyrical standpoint, it's a little bit on the goofy side yeah. compared to all the rest. So Oh yeah, definitely. Not a major issue, but... Eh. Yeah. So, uh, moving on from there, uh, really a long list of pros here, but we'll summarize. Uh, the biggest thing I want to talk about is the conciseness of the package. Now, we're looking at a very brief runtime, 35 minutes in total, uh, but we run through a lot of different tempos, a lot of different styles of tracks, um, a lot of variations here and there, as well as different techniques. Uh, really, the vocalist goes all over the place between all kinds of different uh, types of heavy metal. And really, there's different interplays between the guitar work and the drums, and it, it really rotates between tracks. Uh, you really have a song at the beginning here. Uh, Reaching for the night? Reaching for the night! And that song is really up pace, it's very up tempo, it really, really powers through. And then you've got a song like Satan's Hello, and that one is really more mid pace, uh, but it really lends itself more to the Merciful Fate vibe that they've got going on. Uh, it feels more drawn out and more epic in scale. You've got a lot of the uh, twin guitar really building up and charging up to the chorus and some really excellent solos. And then if you look at the end of the track listing, you've also got the best song on the CD, which is... Beyond the Bells. It's by far the best song on the album to me. It has everything you'd want from a classic heavy metal throwback album. Definitely. Excellent catchy choruses. Starts out with fantastic catchy riffs. Vocals are very powerful. Mandy does a great job all over the album, but she's at her best on this track, I would personally say. Oh, definitely. The guitar solos are extended, really melodic, yet very technical, and all around, it's just an amazing track. Oh, yeah. If I had to recommend anything from this CD, I would definitely go with this track in general. Uh, not only is it one of the best songs I've heard in the style, but I think it's one of the best songs of this year. I haven't heard anything that's had so much charisma, energy, and... Uh, just just genuine interplay between all the different members. I'm, I'm really impressed with the songwriting on here. It's a perfect send-off to an already great album. Um, that's actually one of the things I really wanted to talk about. Uh, you've really got a great first track that sets up all the tracks after that. You've got a middle track here in the self-titled, the eponymous, and then you've got the final track here, which really brings everything back together and sends it off in, in a really spectacular fashion. There really doesn't feel like any low point throughout the album, just interspersed tracks that are maybe shorter in scale and scope. Uh, really just an engaging listen from front to back. Yeah, start to finish, I never found myself bored or wanting to skip any songs at all. No, there's a lot of energy at play here, and you can really feel it, uh, especially through the production, yeah. Well, other than the vocals, as I mentioned at the beginning, are produced excellently. The guitars are perfectly clear, they're mixed well, the, the bass is audible at all times. Oh yeah, present. The drums are right up there in the mix. Everything is absolutely great. <laughs> Definitely. Everything feels very tangible. Uh, it's all equally mixed. It's good to finally hear another uh, heavy metal album that pays not only homage, but it actually feels like a proper, decent production job. A lot of these bands that try to do old, nostalgic heavy metal seem to fail at realizing that people also want to hear something that's well mixed, and this is actually no exception. Uh, while it does feel like a hearkening to those older styles of metal, it also feels very competent, very leveled, very equal. Uh, everything feels like it's hitting you at exactly the right pace. Uh, you really feel like, barring the vocals anyways, everything has been properly leveled in a decent studio. And I know that it actually was a very cheap budget on this one from what I've heard. Uh, I'm actually really impressed with the way that they've recorded and produced everything. Yeah, excellent job all around. Oh, yeah. With all that said, it's probably time to give it a score. And personally for me, this is one of the better debut albums I've heard in recent years. Especially as far as that genre of throwback revival heavy metal goes. Definitely. And there's really not much to complain about, so I would have to give it a 9. It's definitely up there. There are tiny bits of improvement to be made here and there, but overall, Excellent work, and I can't wait to hear more from these guys. Yeah, I totally agree with all your points there. Though, personally, I think I'd give it an 8. There is a lot of room for uh, development. I feel like they still have yet to really hone in on their style. Uh, like we've been saying earlier, there is a lot of variation in tempo differences. Um, but I feel like maybe they're still lacking a little bit of personality. Um, but I totally agree that they are one of the best uh, revival acts that I've heard in some time. I'd almost liken them to EP era or first album era uh, White Wizard. 
Uh, I, I really feel passionate about this band. I feel like they do a great job at really bringing back the fun and charisma that heavy metal had in the 80s. Um, but I think I'd give it an 8. Uh, so jamming those two together, I think we can come up with a very solid 8.5 of an album. Uh, check this one out. A lot of recommended tracks, front to back, just bangers. So, uh, as always, I'm David. I'm Eric. Thank you for being an asshole.